Brian Chute and Alan Tyndall. Well, this is the race uh, that uh, the last time it was televised created almost World War III. Absolutely fabulous entertainment from the tin tops. Uh, the small production saloons up to 1300 cc are on pole position. Surely one of the most uh, experienced saloon men of all. Number 69 there, Frank O'Rourke. Alongside him, John Burns, another champion. Then Bob Montgomery on the outside of the front row. And then two of the new young up and coming fellows. Yes. And uh, Brian Chute, a very experienced saloon car driver himself, is alongside me in commentary. Yes, John Byrne is the main Alpha Sud man amongst all the Opals, but on the second row, number 44, Greg, that's John Burns there, a star, star performer, right? You want it, this man is unbelievable in the wet. Pole position man there, number 69, Frank O'Rourke, the dealer Opal Team Ireland car, and his partner there, number 95, Bob Montgomery. So two Opals, an Opal sandwich for John Burns on the front row. The grid forming up, the marshals are running down. Again, I say to you, watch that man with the white jacket when he puts his hand up, the start lights change to red. And we're waiting for that to happen. There it goes, and the Marshall Tires Saloon Car Race is underway, and a superb start from John Burns, a bad start from Frank Rook. It's Burns from the middle of the front row, Bob Montgomery's on the outside. Frank Rook and somebody's off at very high speed there. Number 11, big problems. Yes, number 11, Mick O'Dwyer got a slight nudge running to Shell, and it's amazing that he missed the rest of the field, but that was it, straight across and onto the grass, but back to our leader, John. A great start from the centre of the front row, tucked in behind him there. Bob Montgomery in the course of 1.3, and Bob's down the inside, no, had a little look. Watch John, the control of this alpha zone. Third place man there, Frank O'Rourke, trying very hard on the long way round. 95, Bob Montgomery. Frank having looked down the outside now. The track on the older Opal, that's Frank in third place. Slightly wide, a little better traction, but number 95, Bob Montgomery has a little better speed in a straight line, but they've still to get by this red demon in front. That's the only thing I can call John Burns, a demon. He can throw this car anyway. Reg Turley uh, from Turley from Terenur, number uh, 44, they're up into fourth place. But a superb stuff. And there they are absolutely tied together as they come down into Dunlop, and already we've seen the type of action that we can expect from these uh, saloons. Taylor is just coming up now as the leaders come past to complete the first of ten laps. So it's Burns, and there's absolutely nothing in it. Montgomery going one side and the other. He tried down the outside last time, he's going to let Frank Rook in the second leader of the Jim Island car through. But this time Montgomery has the advantage for the left-hander, and they're just uh, running in unison, obviously don't want to damage each other at this stage of the race because they've got a big problem in front of them in the Alpha suit. Yes, you saw there how just how quick the Opel Corsa was in a straight line. He tucked in behind John Burns and went to the right, but John copped him, closed the door nice and gently, then had to make him go all the way around the outside. John's still leading. Now Frank is having a look at the inside here as they come down to Esso. It's a second gear band in these 1300 saloons, hard on the brakes into second gear. And then they change from second to third, just as they change direction as the understeer, the front wheel drive, they're into third gear here, flat out as they head for Dunlop. Now John, very experienced, but he still has the problem. This course, you'll see it on the brakes, climbing all over him, then it has the speed in a straight line. Frank having a little look at the inside there, very cheekily. And here they come, and already a back marker in the way there. Uh, John Stewart, I think it was, but uh, there they go, down now. And it's absolutely, and it's Bob Montgomery on the outside. He's got him, Montgomery has him. Now, this is a very handy uh, little knock there from Burns, just to get out of my way, cheeky little knock. So Bob Montgomery up into first place. John Burns in second, Frank O'Rourke third. And O'Rourke, the man who's done all the winning this year, that was amazing, like just the power of the Opal, as I said, I didn't realise it was that powerful, but uh, if we have a replay, uh, it'll be nice to see if Bob actually closes the door and they touch, they get a little touch, you know, but um, John isn't someone that'll give up, he'll be back in and we'll have a look. Now, here they come down the main street, you see the Opal here pulls alongside John Burns, as they drop into top gear, you'll see the Opal has the acceleration, and it goes, and that's Frank sitting in third place. You can see Bob just in in front, right? John changes direction. I'd like to see Bob's hand, see does he give a little nudge? No, he was actually turning into the corner, but it nearly lost a place there for John with Frank O'Rourke in third place. 
So, uh, and here's Burns again, they're at it again. We're one lap later, and there's still absolutely nothing in it. Burns still in second place. And uh, Bob Montgomery there, number 95, the leader. And really looking at that replay uh, once again. Uh, I think John Burns was lucky not to get a nudge, in fact, from Franco Rook, number 69. But now it's O'Rook who's actually done all the winning this year. He's already uh, tied up the Northern Ireland Championship, traveling all the way from Wexford every event to do it. Uh, and uh, he's already tied up his class in the Sexton Championship. So he was saying uh, this morning, in fact, that uh, he felt that Montgomery's car had just got a little bit of edge at the end of the season. And this is exactly what's proving to happen at the moment. So dealer Open Team Ireland, of course, also probably keener to see their newer model out ahead. Yes, you see the bounces of John Burns' car. That shows he's really trying the little out from it. He's all over the Opel in the corners and that. But as I said, the speed of the new Corsa in the straight line is something that John can't do anything about. But under braking, John, look, a little dive. He's having a look at the inside. Oh, this is close. This is good stuff. This is a real saloon car racing. He has him really rattled there, got him really wide, but we'll work flashing the lights on the inside. That won't stop John. He'd want to light the thing up. Now he's flashing Bob Montgomery to hold the inside so he can hold. Now he's up into second place, and this should make a really good battle between John Burns now and Frank. Not a lot John Burns can do in that position. He's going to try and go around the outside. And he's on the grass now, how did he avoid that? But he's lost out badly there, and really he probably would have been better to back off and give it to uh, Franco Rook that one corner. Now remains to be seen how much power do these Opals have in reserve. They've been sort of held up by the Alpha for the first couple of laps. They've completed four laps of this 10-lap uh, Marshall Towers race, and it remains to be seen. Is it going to be open war between the two Opals, or are there team orders happening in there, as we've seen in rallying recently? Frank is one he doesn't like to lose. Team orders or no team orders. As you say, Alan, he felt that the newer car was uh, not quite as tired, right? And he felt that he could have a problem with Bob Montgomery because of the newer car. But Frank, the wily old fox, he can come back. He's alongside Montgomery now going into Dunlop. A nice place to be if he can tuck in behind him and use the car in front. Now he's got the inside line. He's not actually flashing his lights. What happens is every time you turn the wheel, he's catching the, the flasher for the headlights. Now he's on the inside. John Burns has gone to the pits. He's down the inside. Frank having a look. That's unfortunate to see John Burns in the pits. And Frank is into the lead, down the inside. Nice, easy run down the inside. But Frank thinks ahead and he uses Dunlop. He uses Dunlop for Shell. He uses the position coming out of Dunlop to get the inside line to take the lead at Shell. For Frank O'Rourke, multi-experienced driver, Bob Montgomery, been racing for a good number of years also, but O'Rourke uh, already has won uh, the Sexton uh, Championship three times, and uh, John Burns has given it up for the day, he's pulled off into the paddock. But O'Rourke, the National uh, Speed Championship, for three times in the past, and at the moment he leads it on points again this year. And look what's happening further down the field. Real fun and games here. Number 71 is Austin Bishop, who you saw out in uh, the card race a few minutes ago. Austin Bishop, quick change from cards into this little uh, 3P Fiat, leading, but only just uh, that young man, Greg Turley, only 23 years old from Terenure in the Alpha Cert. Yes, and it was Turley that was involved in the first uh, run to Shell Instant. When we get another shot, you see that he has an actual wing missing off the front of his car. The driver's side wing, that's the one on the left-hand side of your screen. Look at this for Dicing. They're closing the door going up the hill. Turley right in behind Austin Bishop at the moment. This is a quite elderly Fiat 1283P, and Austin is an ex-carter and very, very, very good. Two Not laps to go, they're saying there. Another very experienced man just behind them, Mervyn Miller from County Meath. The Mervyn, a very good man at Rallycross. You can see there's not a lot left of Turley's uh, alpha suit there. He's lost that whole front inside wing in his efforts to uh, try and stay in contention. There's, that's the dice, by the way, for third, fourth, fifth, sixth place, and a very close one indeed it is. So Mervyn Miller, number four in the light green car there. 41 just behind him is Dermot Carroll, another very quick man in a Fiat. And uh, number four is the other one, that we're, there is Mervyn Miller, and the other one is number 17, Declan Murray. Austin Bishop at the moment holding a position, holding the right-hand side of the road. He's watching the Alpha all the time, he's keeping in tight. 
Turley trying to go around the outside. Number 17 there, which is Declan Murray in the Fiesta. Still holding on. He's a good line. If he can go, look at them leaning over to the left hand side to try and close the door. Now Bishop closing the door, locking up a back wheel. The Alpha won't get around the outside unless he's made a mistake. They could. It'll be a long drag down now to Shell. If he has the speed, he may be able to nip in. Turley in the car and Van Hire business. Uh, the leaders have now completed seven laps of this 10 lap uh, Marshall Tires race. And Turley through up into third place. These, this Tires, incidentally, is a good half lap behind the leaders, so it's very much the second division, but none, nonetheless entertaining from that. The man at the very back there, number 17, Declan Murray, another uh, novice into racing in the Fiesta, only in his first season. So a lot of uh, young blood coming up here in the 1300cc saloon car class. Yes, Turley recovering from that early schmuzzle going into the first bend is now pulling away from Austin Bishop. Austin now having to defend himself from number 41 there. Dermot Carroll, who's made ground up from the very back of the grid. He started on the very back row. Turley there, wing missing. And here's our leaders, and we still have, still Frank O'Rourke. Frank O'Rourke, number 69, in the 1.3 Opel Cadet, followed closely by his teammate, Bob Montgomery, in the Corsa. Eight laps completed. Uh... And there they are, almost running in team formation in the dealer Opel Team Ireland. Uh, the team that, of course, is very much involved in rallying in uh, Ireland as well. And uh, next weekend, uh, their driver, Austin McHale, will be out to try and uh, regain the lead of the Tarmac Championship over the Isle of Man. But back on the racetrack, it's Frank O'Rourke and Bob Montgomery. They've been driving for dealer Opel Team Ireland for many years now. Very experienced, uh, very fast drivers indeed and really have got the results this year. It's undoubtedly been Franco Rook's uh, year in the 1300cc class. Third place man, Greg Turley, now beginning to pull away a little bit. So it's been quite, we've seen Austin Bishop has gone down a place there. Quite a little bit of uh, turning about there, but uh, up front, it's all according to plan. But according to Franco Rook's plan, at any rate. Yes, I don't think it's according to Bob Montgomery's plan. I think Bob would rather be in front leading Frank, but it is an Opel 1-2. And as you say, it's a good half a lap lead that they have. And fortunately, John Burns had to retire. It may be something wrong with the engine, although he drove very, very slowly and no smoke coming from it. But John is not one that gave, oh, and a little mistake there from Bob Montgomery. Let it understeer out and nearly onto the grass. As I was saying, John Byrne is not a man to give up. It had to be something serious for him to pull in. At the moment, these two can cruise around. Frank looking down in the car as if he'd lost the top off the gear lever, maybe lost the gear lever itself, but uh, has time to do it. That shows how relaxed they are at the front, that he can lean out of the driving position and have a look at the gear lever. Here he is. That's our leader, number 69, Frank O'Rourke, coming down into Esso Complex. And if there's something loose in the car there and roaming around underneath the pedals, it's a very nasty situation indeed for a race driver. However, he's only got about two corners to go up through Castrol, up the Ford straight, back into the third place dice. And it's still number 44 there, Greg Thurley. Uh, number 71, Austin Bishop, uh, uh, now down, down a place. And number four, uh, figuring well there, Mervyn Miller. But here they come, the leaders, Bob Montgomery, uh, in second place there, and once again, it's Frank Morrow who takes the checkered flag for Dealer Opel Team Ireland, an absolutely superb performance uh, for the team, and winners of the Marshall uh, 1300 cc saloon car race. Yes, and reaching down there again, uh, as he crossed the line, Frank, maybe the top did come off the gear lever. This shows you how far they were behind. The dice still for third place. Mark Cuff there, the official starter and finisher, just about to give the flag to Greg Turley in third place. But Dermot Carroll, who got ahead of Austin Bishop up in the fourth. This is Austin Bishop here in the white car, leading the fiesta of Declan Murray. So there they are on their victory lap. Uh, there's number 69, the, car the number that he's carried virtually throughout his competition career. Frank O'Rourke from Wexford in the Cadet SR 1300cc. In second place, number 95, Bob Montgomery, who had a sniff at the lead at one stage of that race in the Opel Corsa. Absolute dominant performance from those two.